Got another really neat AB comparison video for you today. This is a Wolf Pup 16FQ here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And we have these here all day, every day. But this one's a little special because it is in the Black Label Upgrade Package. So we're going to take a look at the things that make the Black Label Series special. And then you can see a full walkthrough video of a full normal 16FQ Wolf Pup. And then you let us know which one you like best. Now, the very obvious feature here in the Black Label series of upgrades, and keep in mind, this is one comprehensive bundle. There's no picky, choosy stuff. It all comes this way. It's either Black Label or not. So, uh, the very obvious thing is that gorgeous, high-gloss gel coat fiberglass exterior on this beauty. That does come at a little bit of a trick. Not only does this uh, whole package come at an uh, additional cost, it does clock in at some extra weight because the one thing you're not doing is actually changing the subskin structure of the RV. What's happening here is you have a dual leaved uh, Luan uh, below this fiberglass. So you're basically adding like a 3 8 decked shield of armor all the way around the exterior of this RV that looks great, that uh, has less wind resistance when you're towing, and uh, cleans more easily than, say, a conventional corrugated side, because that's the side of, like, what a normal wolf pup would look like right next to this right here. However, that does mean that you've added a lot of additional material for the extra weight, so you need to budget which one of those factors is most critical to you. You may have also noticed tying into that real smexy look of this thing, uh, in addition to the decal upgrades are the frameless window package versus the traditional sliding framed windows on these. Also, Black Label will bump us up to the handy one-hand magnet holdbacks on our baggage store latches. And just like the exterior, there are a lot of interior updates when you jump to the Black Label series. For instance, our fabrics change. Uh, it's it's built as something of a designer fabric pattern. I don't know that it's necessarily a, uh, a different type of fabric so much as it is just sort of a different quilting pattern. You'll also find that you jump up from a thermal foil sealed edge countertop to a solid surface counter and you get not just a high-rise faucet, but also a pull-out sprayer faucet. You can see that when you do the black label thing, you get matching solid surface countertop sink covers as well. And just like the traditional wolf pup, you've got yourself a very large, almost like Class B Plus style, uh, deep stainless sink in here. And something the nerd in me noticed, if you put these things sideways, it kind of looks like a Pokemon Pokeball. Another handy feature on the Black Label series is that it will also include a very simple, but very handy battery voltage monitor right here. Like right now, I'm just running off a little uh, battery box and it's telling me that, hey, you know, I'm getting 11.8 volts. That's pretty good. Uh, but if you start to see that dip down, remember that not enough power can be as damaging to your RV as too much. So this is not only just informative, it can also be diagnostic and preventative. And although it's not really hard to add one of these, the Black Label series of Wolf Pups here at Halo RV does also include a battery disconnect switch so that when you're done camping, you can just flip the switch, pull the key, and make sure that you don't have any sort of phantom load trickle draining on your battery. There are a few other minor variances, but the one other major variance between a standard Wolf Pup and a Black Label series is that uh, you're also getting a layer of thermal foil um, you know, radiant barrier uh, up the nose of this thing, over the roof, and down the rear wall to help keep the sunshine out so that you're not baking yourself out of the RV. That in conjunction with those really dark tinted windows and uh, a full-size air conditioner that always comes on these wolf pups will make it so that I don't care what kind of hot climate you're in, you're going to be able to stay in here and stay very comfortable. So that gives you some of the ideas on what the Black Label upgrades offer you. And here's a quick look at the standard 16 FQ Wolf Pup, I can't speak, and I would really like to know. Please leave us a comment, let me know what you like, what you dislike about each, and hey, maybe you'll get to start seeing more of these beauties. Just about 3,100 pounds, this is the Wolf Pup 16 FQ here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan, and at a glance, it looks just like the previous 16 FQ Wolf Pups we've had here at Halo RV. However, they put through a couple minor revisions and one significant revision that made me say, I need to go get some brand new footage of this. The biggest difference is this little camper now has a Murphy bed up front. And I really don't know if I could be any happier with this current wave of revisions. Um, if you notice on the left, you see things like there's a sink cover now. So between the recessed sink and stove covers, 
You've got prep space that was not there before. This new addition of the Murphy bed in this floor plan gives this floor plan uh, the space, the living area, the breathing room that it needed. Over the years, I mean, this has been one of the most popular wolf pups on the marketplace, and for good reason. It, it, I mean, it's an ideal, awesome starter couples camper, and that's why we're going to put this video together to really highlight all the little features that it, it adds. But a lot of people would trade them in after two or three years and say, we just needed something with more space on those rainy days. I don't know that that's going to be the case now, which it's good for our customers. In a way, it's bad for us because we'll be taking less wolf pups on trade, but this gives us the seating and the sleeping of an rv with something like a sofa slide out without adding the extra length weight and cost of a sofa slide out and that's what makes murphy beds so darn good ladies and gentlemen it's literally two floor plans in one camper and if you've seen a wolf pup in years past this is pretty much what it looked like and that's what's kind of cool about this if you don't care that it's a Murphy bed. If you don't care whatsoever, don't use it like a Murphy bed. There is absolutely nothing lost by just leaving the bed down. You can leave the bed down in transit. You can leave it down all day. It doesn't hurt a darn thing. Or you can put the bed away when it starts to rain or if you have company and you need extra seats. Um, you know, a bedroom is kind of a private space. It's nice to be able to sort of put your sleeping area away when you have a guest over and enjoy a little bit more privacy here. Now, both sides of the bed have these nice angled wardrobe uh, cabinets. Those are actually an optional piece of equipment here on the 16FQ. But something you'll notice is both sides of the bed also have household and USB plugs. So that this is very CPAP, uh, heated blanket, phone charger friendly. And extra little details like that. That's what separates Wolf Pup from a lot of other single axle couples campers. And I figured as long as we're here and I'm opening everything up, might as well open these things up so you can see they actually are handy hanging cabinets. Now, one of the questions I think people might ask at this point is, okay, smart guy, so you gave me this Murphy bed, but uh, did I lose that storage under the bed that used to be there? And the short answer is no. You didn't lose out on any of that storage. Now it's just under the sofa. And frankly, it's easier to get to. The old wolf pup beds did not have gas struts to lift them up. You could prop it open with like a jack leg crank, but you don't have to do any of that now. Because if you, uh, these little jackknife sleeper sofas, there's no magic to what I'm doing here. There's a little sweet spot when they're halfway open, halfway closed, where they'll just hold themselves. So you can get to the storage down there whenever you need to. And you know what I thought about? If you modified the front fascia of that sofa just slightly, that'd make a perfect little sort of like pet kennel down there. As we flip around the other way, I'd like to draw your attention to the floor, which is pretty easy considering that's where I'm pointing the camera currently. You can see that other than the carpet square where I just, you know, kind of brush my feet off when I get in, we are carpetless, we are ventless, easy cleaning, kid friendly, pet friendly, etc. You know, sometimes accidents happen. Sometimes you spill a drink, not a worry. And on that note, both the kitchen countertop and the bathroom countertop and the tabletop are all a sealed edge press membrane material, so uh, water liquids can't penetrate through there. Now we've got, uh, in addition to this huge campsite window right next to the sofa and the bed that we already saw, you've got this full-size window overlooking your dining table right here. But if you're really looking for serious campsite visibility and airflow, there's one more thing you can do. Pop that door open, and the anti-slam door is not going to smack around in the breeze. We'll talk more about that outside. And then you get this. If I mean, I mean what other 16-foot box camper can offer you that kind of campside window, screen, airflow, etc. coverage? That That's pretty awesome right there. But if you're looking to be a little bit more of a shy guy, you can also close her right down and enjoy lots of privacy. And that's where these nice pleated nightshades come in. You've got those both sides of the sofa, obviously, here over the dinette. And, if need be, you could always fold her down to be a little bit of a guest sleeping space. And if we take a look up from there, on the left side you see household and USB plugs. Um, you might have remembered when we talked about that next to the bed. Anywhere that you sit or sleep in a Cherokee, they've got plugs where you can power things up. Their entertainment system is also pretty smart and simple. Like. You can see that there's a TV bracket on the wall right there. Now that this is a Murphy bed, I think that's better position than ever because the sofa directly faces this. But uh, most of the time people are in a wolf pup not to watch TV. Um, 
you, you might want to have a little stereo background noise on, and that's what this guy is right here. This is going to be a Bluetooth AM FM stereo, but what's really neat is you see that you've got face-mounted HDMI and a powered USB plug right here, and I stress powered because what that means is if you want to do something like add a, uh, a Roku stick or an Amazon Fire, or etc., you could make this streaming media-friendly very quickly and easily, and when you plug it into that stereo unit, it will transmit and throw that signal over to a TV should you choose to add one. And then just a little details, like you see how they added a light right above the dinette under that overhead cabinet? That's the little detail stuff, guys, that a lot of brands will leave out. Another thing that you will often not get in a little trailer like this is full storage below the seating. But why, you might ask? Why do other small trailers sometimes not give you storage down here? And the answer is often because they have done things the a little bit easier way, and that doesn't mean worse. Easier doesn't always mean worse. But... What I mean by that is they've done things an easier way from a build production standpoint because it's very easy to put things like water pumps, heaters, uh, water holding tanks under one of these dinette seats. It's a nice big rectangular uh, cube space that is very easy to work with. But that also means that that is very good storage space. And if there's one thing I really like about what they're doing here on these Cherokees, it's that they are focused on user-friendly function first. And then they find more creative ways to hide all the mechanical aspects of the RV so that you maintain maximum function. Now, we've got that bathroom door in the way right there. We'll get that open in just a second as we uh, take a look at the kitchen because there's actually a surprising amount of good stuff going on in such a small space here. One of the big things to talk about here is the biggest fixture in the kitchen, and that is a full six cubic foot two-door gas electric fridge freezer. It provides so much more cold storage capacity than kind of the, the almost sort of truck camper style refrigerators that go under the countertop. Speaking of truck camper style, they really kill it. And really, I don't know, like they use kind of a truck camper style stovetop, but they really use like a class B sink right here. And what I mean by that is like, you see how you've got your handy little stovetop burner here and you've got that big stainless radius sink We'll come back to that in just a second. I want to take a quick look at the storage space down below. But what I want to point out here is by going with the non-traditional, not the least expensive countertop and sink fixtures, they've done something here that I don't know other little brands have really figured out and capitalized on yet. They've given us prep space. Really good, functional prep space. And that is, again, something a lot of little trailers some that cost three to six thousand dollars more. Similar floor plans you can find here at Halet RV of Goldwater, Michigan, do not have this level of countertop space. And by going with that sealed edge countertop, that allowed them to recess the sink in the stove. They did so, and then they gave us the uh, counter matching radius sink cover and that fold down stovetop uh, lid, which you know tempered glass. It, it is very strong. You can really, like, if you can set a bag of groceries on it, it's not going to break or anything. It's made to rattle down the road, and it doubles as a handy backsplash. So it's it's just, it's really amazing, the efficiency and the function of the kitchen area that we have going on here. I also like that uh, stainless Furion stove that they have. It gives it a very modern look. And part of the reason you're getting some sharper features like that is just due to the fact that uh, uh, Cherokee being one of the very highest volume things in the entire marketplace, uh, the Cherokee family as a whole is literally the single most successful thing at all of Forest River. And whenever I point at something straight white like that, the camera can't figure out what it's supposed to focus on, pardon me. What you can see though, is that straight white is the shower surround paneling for an easy step in shower, not a big travel trailer tub. You've also got a foot flush toilet here with plenty of leg room and enough room in this bathroom to actually get dressed. And the reason being, they went with a full seven foot wide rear bathroom, not a little corner bath. And what that allows them to do is give you more space to actually stretch out, get dressed in here. You've got this nice sort of uh, vanity setup with great counter space because they had more room for that while still having a very large sink, um, easy reach appliance outlets, and plenty of storage below. The look of these things is still absolute dynamite. 
um, and that uh, beautiful painted aluminum nose sweep on the front kind of just sets everything off. We've got that uh, gorgeous morning sunshine. Summer is finally here in Michigan. We have had a chilly, long spring, and I am just soaking up those rays. This is an easy towing, seven foot wide body, which means even though you, I, I always recommend you get towing extension mirrors, you may not need them depending on your vehicle, but man, that is one of those things you will never regret. It's kind of like a weight distribution anti-sway system. There's never going to be a time in which you would, you would regret having one. There might be a time in which you might regret not having one. That's how I feel about tow extension mirrors. Um, now, in case you're kind of curious, I just want to clear something up. There's a little box hooked onto the front of this. That's the RV delivery driver's uh, safety battery box, and you can see their license plate there. Those things won't be on the trailer when you take it home. But what will be on the trailer when you take it home is a full uh, deep cycle marine battery. And that comes at no extra charge here at Halid RV. All of our pricing includes like propane battery, water uh, hose, sewer hose, water electric surge protectors. We clean it, we show you how it works. We don't ding you for extra stuff. Like there's no extra charge to get it shipped here. There's no extra charge to, we, we just don't do fees basically. You get the point. Um, quick note on that painted aluminum front, that is 67% thicker than the sidewall aluminum. And an easy thing to miss is there is a simple gas grill quick connect down here. And it's a little odd that it's over here on this side of the camper. But remember the small body size of this RV. It means that it, you know, you, you've got more room on your campsite. Plus, this nice little nook right up front here where the tongue jack kind of recesses in. That's a perfect little spot to be grilling. And the camper's small enough, it's not like you have to walk an acre to get there. Additionally, um, a lot of people don't like cooking in the camper or under the awning because you can kind of smoke the camper up and build a lot of extra heat into this thing. Uh, as we pass down the sidewall here, a couple of neat little things. A full outside shower on a single axle camper. These are two things that don't often meet together. Um, I think that's something that, yeah, the Catalina series is actually good about, but most single axle campers like this are built like just to be cheap, 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 price, price, price. And if you've noticed, the whole idea behind a Wolf Pup is that it's got pretty much all the same equipment as its big brothers. These are a little more expensive than other wood skeleton trailers in their class and category, but you're getting a little bit more for it. Now, as we uh, back up here, neat little thing is right above our sewer station, we have this handy little uh, convenience or courtesy light. And it is on a completely separate switch from everything else in the RV. So that you don't accidentally turn that on and, you know, it's facing the neighbor's campsite if you are in an RV park of any sorts. And they're not going to appreciate having a light blaring into their bedroom window at night. We've got the 200 pound rated flip down cargo rack on the back with that spare tire. You do not need to remove the spare tire to make that thing work, by the way. And what is also nice here, this is built just like its big brother Grey Wolf in Cherokee. And you can walk on the roof just like its big brother Grey Wolf in Cherokee. And that is one of those things that smaller single axle campers cannot always offer. And on a little trailer like this, easily looked at as an entry level class, they could have easily cheaped out on the awning, but they didn't. That's not what Wolf Pup is about. If you've noticed, this has been a pretty feature laden little trailer. Uh, again, kind of built to the uh, equipment package of the much bigger trailers. You can see the truck pulling away from it. This is literally fresh off the delivery truck. We've actually got Mr. Jody Van Lu inside. He's one of our quality inspection specialists checking everything on this thing before we uh, officially accept it from the factory level. But back to the awning here. It does have lighting under the awning. We just don't have it turned on currently. Uh, also, neat little accent matching lights on the speakers. This is also, you see this little thing, it says pull down to pitch adjust. Two finger simple, two finger tilt adjust on this awning. And that's all it takes to crank this thing down so that if you want a little bit of rainy day runoff, you can see how that awning is no longer on a level plane. It's dipping down. Very handy on a light drizzly day so you can kind of predict and control where the water's gonna come through your RV. These are also pretty pet friendly. Uh, well, actually this trailer is very pet friendly. It's carpetless, ventless flooring, and we've got our handy little pet leash latch over here so you can keep your furry little four-legged friends kind of on your campsite and not running off or getting spooked by a sound they're not used to hearing at an unfamiliar campsite. Same mag wheels here you'd find on a larger Cherokee or Grey Wolf. They also have those uh, tire pressure indicators on their valve stems so that at a glance you don't have to walk over here with a, uh, a tire pressure indicator. At a glance before you leave on your trip you can say oh crap gotta put some air in the tires. 
because improper tire inflation is the single number one cause of flats in the uh, trailer industry. A lot of people don't realize that. So these uh, more ride stable steps here, they are just everywhere and I'm thankful for it. Especially on a little trailer like this, the body's so small that if you, as you come and go, you can just kind of see how it's rocking and rolling around a little bit, just with Jody moving inside. Well, uh, the uh, uh, stable steps here will really prevent that. Now, when you have the four corner stabilizer jacks down, and it'll also eliminate a lot of that, and that is another thing. This does have four corner jacks, not just rear jacks and then a front tongue jack, which causes this thing to wiggle everywhere. You might notice that door kind of dancing right there. That is an anti-slam entry door, so that, uh, you know, if the wind catches it, or if uh, you've got a grandkid over or something like that, they don't fling it open, and that larger entry handle on a little trailer makes for some pretty easy come and go. This also has a nice chunk of front storage capacity, which is a perfect place to put something like a, a portable solar panel, and coincidentally, or maybe not so coincidentally, you see a little solar prep plug right there. Now the front pass-through on these has changed from my previous video due to the inclusion of that new simple but effective Murphy bed system that they have in the front of this. And that is something I've been, I've been begging different manufacturers. Find a way to put a simple, um, you know, inexpensive but effective Murphy bed in these little single axle couples campers right here. Because the one thing this lacked was like just a nice sofa, just a nice place to be able to sit down. And now it doesn't have that problem. Now you see how Jody's rolling that awning in for us during his quality inspection, but remember how he had that awning arm tilted? The reason I'm not in a panic right now thinking, oh my god, the awning's gonna break is because those easy tilt awnings are also self-correcting. So even if you forget that it's on an angle and you wake up in the morning and you roll it up, no big deal. Nothing's gonna get damaged, nothing's gonna get bent up. And it's that extra little detail like that that we give you here at Halid RV. And for that, all we ask is just a fair opportunity to earn your business, no matter where you're at, when you're ready. And remember that we do not do hidden dealer fees, but we do hitching, pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.